Hey, you and kids, welcome to February. We are on February 7th today, and I am so glad that you are joining us this morning. Now, a new month means a new life app. And what's a life app? Do you guys remember? It's a characteristic of God that you can apply to your life to make the world around you better, right? And our life app this month is kindness, showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. In our verse, let's open up our Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. What a great verse this month. And our story today, we are popping back into Ephesians and we're going to chapter four, verse 32. And if you remember, Paul, he wrote to the, the people of Ephesus and this is what he said to them. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Do you guys remember? At Easter time, Jesus died on the cross and then he rose again three days later so that he could forgive all your sins. That's what God is asking us to do too, is to forgive one another. Well, I hope you enjoy our Bible story today and we'll see you again next week. Bye everyone. snack bar? A good word of the month at school? A great catchphrase for a t-shirt. Kindness can be all those things, but it can't stop there. Kindness isn't something you wear on the outside. It's what comes from the inside. Kindness chooses to slow down and see the value in someone else, even if you are upset, tired, or in a hurry. Kindness chooses to treat everyone like they're made in the image of God, even if they're different, overlooked, or unloving. See, when you choose kindness, you choose your words wisely. I can't believe you did that! Ah! I'm sorry you had a rough day. How can I help? When you choose kindness, you offer it to everyone, from your family and friends to that grouchy old neighbor and that kid at school you can't stand. When you choose kindness, others see the love of God shining through you. That's why kindness is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Woo!
that's in this love I know What you give to me is not for me to keep It's for the world to see your love I tend to get a teensy weensy bit excited whenever I talk about game day! Game day! Game day! Go! 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 You see, being a fan is important to me because it's the perfect way to show your favorite team kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Being a super fan is how I show my team what they mean to me. They bring me so much excitement and joy every time they win. I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm gonna burst. And even when they don't win, they're still so much fun to watch. That's why I cheer so loud. It's why I put on face paint and make a fool out of myself. <laughs> but kindness is bigger than just being a fan of a sports team. We should be kind to everyone. We should be fans of the people we see every day. Woohoo! Go everyday people! Way to be normal! Woo! But everyday people eh, don't always fill me with excitement and joy. They're not always fun to watch. So why should I be a fan of everyday people? Is there even a point to kindness? Of course there is! And you'll find out what it is in today's story. Too much! Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. See you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse 32. Sally Jessup and May Lynn lived in the same town and went to the same school. And both girls had YouTube shows about slime that racked up views from across the world. Get slimed with May. Sally's Slime Creations. The two girls were polite to each other in the hall at school. Hey there. Hi. But they weren't exactly friends, either. I'm doing glow-in-the-dark slime next week, so you should do something different. Look, I give my viewers what they want. Which is basically the same thing over and over. Rainbow sand slime. 
Rainbow Unicorn Slime, Rainbow Crunchy Slime. You're just jealous how many views my Rainbow Glitter Slime got. Whatever. Plus, you use borax in your slime. It's not safe. Is too. Liquid starch is way better. The two girls glared at each other and marched off. A few days later, May watched Sally's newest episode. Sally's Slime Creations. She really should get better theme music. Here's a super important PSA before we get started. You've probably seen some slime recipes that use borax, but borax isn't safe or healthy. Hey, that is not true. I know there's another YouTube show telling you to use borax for the best slime, but in my opinion, you should just unsubscribe to that channel. What? And now it's time for some rainbow fluffy slime. You have got to be kidding. Sally just told thousands of people to stop watching my show. Well, I am unsubbing her right now. May couldn't stop thinking about what Sally had done. I cannot believe her. In the cafeteria at school the next day, Sally walked over to where May was sitting with some other friends at the lunch table. Can I sit here? No way, she can't sit here. When Sally spilled her backpack at the lockers. Oh no. May pretended not to notice and marched right on past. That evening, when May recorded her next episode, she had an announcement of her own. Today on Get Slime with May, I've got an amazing guest to tell us all about the science of slime. But first, I need to warn you about another slime channel. Someone's telling you not to use borax. Well, you should hit unsubscribe fast because she's a liar. Borax is completely safe and makes the best slime. Now it's time to welcome our guest, Wendy Newton. She's a chemistry expert. May switched to a split screen with her guest, a middle-aged woman with wild curly hair and sleepy eyes. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. I'm honored to be here. I gotta ask, you think borax is the best thing to use for slime, right? Borax is great if it's used correctly. I think God has given each of us the smarts to look up safety guidelines and be wise about it. Oh, yeah, of course. So let's get down to it. You're a chemist. How cool is that? You could say we're all chemists. I mean, just baking brownies is chemistry. That's right. What kind of chemistry are you whipping up for your dinner? Oh, well, it's actually uh, uh, uh 3 a.m. here. Wait, what? I'm in Dubai right now. But that's like halfway around the world, so it's night. I. Oh, I am so sorry. I woke you up. It's all right. You said that in your email. I forgot. It's okay, really. You're being so nice about it. Hey, kind is cool. There's this verse in the Bible from the book of Ephesians. It's kind of my motto. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. May frowned. She had to admit she wasn't always great at being kind when someone made her angry. Look, I've messed up so many times and God has wiped the slate clean every single time. That makes it a lot easier to forgive when other people make mistakes. Like calling in the middle of the night? Hey, aren't we a little off topic from slime? Um, I think I'm gonna have to restart this recording. I said some stuff about someone else I need to delete and how about I call you back in the morning? I mean, my morning, your afternoon. Hmm, hmm, that sounds fantastic. May leaned back in her chair and released a long breath. I haven't been very kind at all, even a little. Grabbing her phone, May started a DM to Sally. Hey. I'm sorry about the lunch table thing. I think rainbow slime is pretty cool. Maybe we should do a show together sometime. May wasn't sure how Sally would respond, but she did feel better knowing that she'd taken the steps toward being kind, instead of focusing on payback. So what's the point of kindness? Why should we be fans of other people? The answer is here. 
Ephesians 4.32, the Apostle Paul wrote, Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. God sent Jesus to die for our sins, not because we deserved it, but because that's how much God loves us. <laughs> Talk about kindness. And we can show God how much we love him by being kind to others. That means forgiving people even when they let you down. I forgive you for spilling grape juice all over my favorite shirt. I still love you. It means helping someone even when you're not told to. Whoa, 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 don't move that refrigerator all by yourself. <laughs> Let me help you out. <laughs> or I'll try to. Woo! And sometimes kindness means just being a fan. Thank you for packing my lunch for school. You make the best of lunches. The one thing to remember today is this. Be kind to others because God is kind to you. Be fans of other people. Then every day can feel like... <laughs>